Okay, ready to dive into the first battle of Bull Run. This is Legendary Mode, the Confederate Campaign, Ultimate General Civil War. And odds are going to be pretty even. Uh, he's got just a few more thousand men than I do. Uh, twenty-eight, Almost 29,000 soldiers to my 25,500. However, I'm on the defensive, so that helps. However, a lot of my troops don't come until late in the battle, so that hurts. So we're going to see how this is going to go. I'm actually going to try a very different strategy. Uh, I did a playthrough last night just testing this new strategy. Uh, first time. I'm going to probably try to do that a few times uh, with some of the major battles. Play through them once before I try to record them. I wish I had been recording because it went really, really well. And when I realized it was going really, really well, I actually did record some of the end. So uh, depending on how this goes, I may or may not show some of the footage from that other battle. It ended up about three to one casualties in my favor with this stra uh, favor with this strategy so i'm gonna hope that the same thing happens again but of course i don't know that for sure so here's what we're gonna do uh we're gonna stick the guys with the 1841 mississippis actually you know what uh, because they're not quite as good at melee combat i'm gonna stick the 1842s here so i'm gonna break off skirmishers from both of those units Actually, all three. So then I'm going to stick these guys here. I'll keep the guns right at the top. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep one brigade up here, send skirmishers. And a brigade of infantry. Which one is that? Those are the ones with the Mississippis. I'm going to keep them. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and send them up here. All right, so that's what we're going to do. And the strategy that I ended up using last night that worked really well was I actually held this position all the way through the battle. I never gave up the bridge, uh, but I also never went to try and hold Matthews Hill because I think that's just foolish, especially on legendary mode, to try and do that. So yeah, I'm going to stick skirmishers as well as one brigade up here. And then what I'm going to do is, I want you to face that way. Uh, once they actually start trying to cross the bridge, I'm going to bring this infantry down here and these skirmishers down here so we get multiple units firing on whoever's trying to cross the bridge. And we'll see how that works. Now, in my last playthrough on the campaigns, I didn't really spend a lot of time talking about the historical battles just because I had done that other times. But since I know a lot of you folks are new to my channel, I am going to go ahead and go back and start doing that a little more. So as this battle progresses, we'll talk a little bit about some of the historical aspects of the first battle of Bull Run as it was known to the north, or the first battle of Manassas as it was known in the south. The south, uh, if you're not real familiar with the Civil War, South tended to name their battles by the nearest uh, populated place, nearest village, nearest town. North almost always named their battles after the nearest body of water. So Bull Run Creek gives the name to Bull Run. Manassas Junction uh, gives the name to Manassas for the north, or for the, for the south. One of the few exceptions to that was the uh, Battle of Gettysburg, which was called Gettysburg by both sides. Uh, Antietam was Sharpsburg to the south. Shiloh in the north was known as uh, Pittsburgh Landing in some ways, and that's kind of interesting too because Shiloh was actually named after a church, not a body of water. So, But you'll find many of the battles have multiple names. Chancellorsville was another one that only had one name on both sides. and There wasn't really a bottle, uh, body of water there. So, All right, we drove off the second New York. Now we'll wait for the, the second Ohio to cross. Interestingly, that uh, it's Battle that actually took the, the brunt there, rather than Preston. But real good so far, as far as the casualties go. 
These guys actually aren't even taking any casualties, but they're inflicting them on, on this Ohio unit. I wonder if I can get these skirmishers over here and get them in range to be able to fire as well. So uh, this is before there were corps in the army. Of course, neither army was that big. Honestly, the armies that participated in this battle were the size of an army corps by the time you get to Gettysburg. 20, 30,000 men. There were two armies for the south. Uh, there was the Army of the Potomac. Uh, kind of confusing, I know, but uh, it wasn't until Robert E. Lee took over in 1862 that the main Confederate army in the Eastern Theater was known as the Army of Northern Virginia. It was the Army of the Potomac. And I believe that the Union Army was called the Army of Virginia. Now, they had an Army of Virginia later in the war as well, but... Um, so it's kind of interesting. Irvin McDowell was the overall commander for the Union forces at first bull run. Uh, Confederates had two armies, one under uh, General Beauregard, PGT Beauregard, the other under uh, Joseph Johnston. Beauregard had been the uh, commander of the forces that fired on Fort Sumter. All right, so here come our first reinforcements. And I'm going to take these guns right over here because I want to want to hold this bridge as long as I can. And I'm going to scoop battle forward so I can hit him. All right, General B is also going to come over here. Of course, Bernard B. is the one who is credited with giving Stonewall Jackson or his brigade the, the nickname Stonewall. Wow. Okay, battle got lit up there. That's not how I want that to go. B. was also mortally wounded at the first battle of Bull Run. But it's said that he uh, was rallying his forces at Henry House Hill, which is right down here. Uh, we don't see much of it yet. But he uh, he was quoted as having uh, told his troops, look, there's Jackson standing like a stone wall. Let us determine to die here and we shall conquer. Rally behind the Virginians. Now, that's one way. Uh, other people have argued he was actually insulting uh, Stonewall Jackson and his men when he said that. But it went down in history as a compliment. And Jackson, for the rest of his life, which is only another two years after that, always credited the name to the brigade, not to himself. Right, we've got to be careful with that. He's lining these guys up on the, on the creek here. Yes, I'm in northeast Ohio, and here I believe most of us call it a creek rather than a crick. But maybe that's just me, I don't know. All right, let's see how this is going here. Looks like First Ohio's gonna try and make another crossing. Wow, he's got three, 368 kills and has not lost a man. I love that. Uh, Preston lost his brigade commander. That's not ideal. Here comes Wade Hampton. When I played through the, this last night, Wade Hampton was actually killed in this battle. Right, I'm gonna rush B to get up here. I think Hampton will be coming up over here on this side. Alright, we gotta advance forward. He's trying to cross, this time with two regiments. Oh, looks like just one. Uh, the Union's just now getting to Matthews Hill. The one thing I have to worry about here is that he's got some huge brigades. I mean, we're talking 3,000 men. There's at least three or four of them like that. Uh, and those are going to be problems because I'm not going to have that kind of manpower over here, even when I get my reinforcements in the next phase. So I'm more than holding my own right now, and that's going to continue... I'm actually going to plug B into that spot as soon as he gets close enough. 
And I think that's going to cause him to advance when he sees me pull out. Oh, maybe not. He, he must have already seen the bee was there. So I'm going to get Preston out of here. Just for the time being. Because he's... I'd rather have a strong force that has a active commander. Because if Preston gets hit with a melee attack and he has no brigade commander since his was killed, that may not end well. I'm going to get the supplies over there. Because my artillery is starting to run low. Hampton, I'm just going to park right here because nothing's going to happen here until we get to the next phase. As soon as Matthews Hill is no longer contested, which is in 54 minutes, uh, phase one of the battle will be over. I actually think I might go ahead and take Preston over. Here comes Keys. There's one of those first huge brigades. It's really interesting to look at first the first battle of Bull Run because you have a lot of men who later on had very prominent roles in the in the war who started out as uh, regiment or brigade commanders here at first bull run people like uh william tecumseh sherman i uh, was a brigade commander oliver howard was br brigade commander here um we'll see some of the other i think richard yule was a brigade commander here wade hampton of course ends up a lieutenant general yule as well So Battle's taking a lot of the fire right now. I'm going to pull him back, at least until they try to cross again. So I'm going to keep those guys parked here. Not a lot happening for the moment. Let's go ahead and speed up just a little bit. If he starts to cross the bridge again, then I'll, uh, I'll bring my units down to fire. I'm waiting to see if that's what Keys is going to do here. Oh, you get away from my supplies, dude. Alright, I'm going to bring one unit of skirmishers over here just to cover my rear. No, 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 Kemper. You stay facing that way. I'm waiting to see if he's going to try to cross. I would expect he's going to try one more time. A lot of men massed there right now. Here he comes. Okay. going to be keys first. The main thing here is we want to try and route him before he gets fully engaged in melee combat. But it looks like in this case he's going to make it across. But he'll get driven back. It just depends on, oh, General B was wounded. Nah, I didn't need that. Now i got two brigade commanders over here with no uh, that have been taken down. It's historical though. I mean, B was mortally wounded at first bull run is not here. Uh, he was actually driven out of the fortifications. I'm going to have to throw a battle in there real quick. And that's all because he lost his brigade commander. I mean, that's really what it comes down to there. Otherwise, I can't believe that would have happened. Here comes Sherman's brigade. I was just mentioning William Tecumseh Sherman. There he is. Sherman's going to try to cross over here. He's also got artillery, but I'm in the woods, so that should that should help. Got seven minutes left, and this phase of the battle will be over. So Sherman's really not going to get a chance to cross just yet. Alright, so there's uh, phase one. Now we're going to withdraw to Henry Hill. We're going to get our next batch of reinforcements. 
And this, honestly, is the only part I'm concerned about is phase two. If I hold phase two, I'm fine because then I get reinforcements and I'll be able to counterattack. Uh, but the main thing is just hanging on uh, during this next part. Okay, here we go with phase two. Now let's go ahead and pause for just a second because the battlefield has opened up. We're going to get some reinforcements here. Uh, and he's going to make a big push to try and cross his bridge as well as cross up here. So I've got to think about how I want to do this. Now, when I fought this yesterday, uh, he came all the way down here and attacked up this hill. And this is where I had to kind of watch. And it's also where I'm going to get, here comes Stonewall Jackson's brigade. They're divided up into regiments. And I'm actually going to send the first two regiments up to reinforce the troops at the bridge. And the rest I'll send up here to start holding Henry Hill. And here comes Sherman. He's going to cross. I feel like I need another brigade there. Bartos firing at somebody. Oh, skirmishers, okay. Right. Sherman's going to try to cross. I'm a little nervous about that. I don't know that I've got the troops to hold him there. That may be a change I made from the last time I fought this battle yesterday. I think I had an extra brigade there that I don't have now. I might need to send Hampton's Legion over there quickly. It may be too late. Oh, okay, Sherman's going to stand pat. I just got to survive this next hour and 45 minutes and then I think I'll be okay. Are we still firing on him? If we're not, we need to be. Somebody else is coming up here. Oh, supplies. So, interesting to note that at the time this battle was fought on July 21st, 1861, this was the largest battle in American history. Uh, kind of hard to fathom when you think of how small the numbers were here compared to so many of the other battles of the Civil War. But that just shows you the level of carnage in this war compared to anything else that the Americans had ever experienced before. Everybody thought the war was going to be over after this one battle. They thought uh, who, whoever won, you know, that would kind of be it. Uh, there wouldn't really be much more than this, and uh, it really served as a wake-up call, especially in the north. Lincoln had only called for 75,000 volunteers. The day after this battle, Lincoln signed into law a bill that permitted them, uh, that basically made the way for them to raise another half a million troops. So they recognized pretty quickly after this battle that it was not going to be a quick, quick end to the war. Casualties, um, just short of 500 deaths on the Union side, a little over 1,000 wounded, another 1,000 or 1,500 or so that were captured or missing. I think the Confederates had about 400 dead, another 1,600 wounded. So about 2,000 battle casualties on either side, plus those that were missing, a lot of whom were probably captured in the... Um, the route that happened after this battle for the Union. It was 25 miles from Washington, D.C., and a lot of people had come out to see the battle. It was on a Sunday, which I think really probably was something that Stonewall Jackson hated because he hated to fight on Sunday. But uh, a lot of people came out to see the battle, made it like a picnic, congressmen and women, people of Washington society, so I think a lot of them had to have been shocked when they had to retreat, and they actually clogged a lot of the roads and bridges uh, with their carriages. I've mentioned this before, but a great uh, 
couple of different uh, television shows have depicted that. Uh, one was The Blue and the Gray, which is one of my all-time favorite Civil War uh, TV or movies of any kind. Uh, and also the fictional series North and South. They also show the events of First Bull Run. First Bull Run is depicted in the movie Gods and Generals, but mostly focusing on uh, the perspective of Stonewall Jackson. But probably the most historically accurate of the bunch. Alright, I think we're doing okay here. I'm a little worried about B with no brigade commander. Let's get the 2nd Virginia down here firing. I'm actually going to, I think, move the 4th Virginia over. We've routed Burnside, but now i got to watch Franklin. Yeah, see, these are. this is what I worry about, these huge brigades coming up. I'm going to bring Preston down here and try to get into Porter's flank. And then you got Oliver Howard back here, another one. So you can see right here, we've got 10, what, 12,000 men in these four brigades. And I don't have nearly that kind of manpower. But basically all I need to do is hold on. I don't need to overwhelm them or even drive them off. I just need to hang on, and then I'm going to get all these reinforcements coming up from the south in the last phase of the battle in another hour. Uh, this was the first battle. Uh, in American history where rail railroads played a major part. In fact, uh, it probably helped turn the tide of battle because an entire Confederate army arrives by rail. And they are the ones who really kind of turn the tide of this thing. That and the Union just doing a really poor job of coordinating their forces. Of course, part of the problem with this was there was no standardized uniform on either side, uh, especially on the South. But uh, So at the first battle of Bull Run, you have... Uh, Confederate units in blue. You have Union units in gray. Uh, there were multiple instances of friendly fire happening because of some of that confusion. Let's see what's happening over here. He's got this cavalry up here. I've just got these few skirmishers here to deal with that, but all right, Second Virginia is kind of holding their own. But honestly, I want to pull them back because I don't want them engaging in a shootout. I want to make him come to me across the bridge. So he's he's parking Franklin back there right now. So this is actually working out well for me. Okay, here's Stewart. I'm going to send him up to screen against some of this cavalry. I think we're going to be okay here. This seems to be working. I don't know where Preston's going. Franklin and Burnside. This is where it's going to get a little hairy. Looks like I sent Stewart just in time. I'm going to pause for just a second just to kind of evaluate where everybody stands here. Make sure I've got, I don't have any glaring weaknesses that I need to deal with. Looks like everything's good. I'm going to go over and resupply these guys because they've been firing for quite a while. So I'm a little nervous about their state of supply. And that's interesting. I'm going to try to run over real quick and grab these supplies with Stewart's cavalry. Hopefully there's not a brigade hiding over here somewhere that I don't see. Before I get too far there, I want to go back and look and see what's happening down here. I really need I need Preston to get over. Scoot over, dude. Let's get Stonewall over here. 
33rd Virginia is going to have a rough time staying intact because they're taking the brunt of Porter's fire. And the 27th Virginia is not really suffering any casualties. Oh, look at that. He snuck somebody across. I didn't cover this spot here. All right. I'm going to send Bartow down here to deal with that. So I did have one little blind spot there. I'm going to run up try to grab these supplies before he gets to the woods. Okay. Colonel Cummings is wounded. I think he's the commander of the 33rd Virginia. The one that I'm worried about here. That's about to break, it appears. All right, we got to hang on for 43 more minutes. This is going to be tough. I wonder if I can turn B real quick here. Because he's kind of stuck in the water. And with B turning, he's going to start coming across the bridge again. Colonel Preston was killed. See, this is uh, it's just brutal the way I'm losing troops. However, Preston ought to be getting into Porter's flank right now. I gotta get back across the river with these supplies. Alright, I actually think these guys are going to hold okay right here. So I may go ahead and send Bartow over here. Just because I know the 33rd Virginia's got it rough and he's got these huge brigades over here. And back up so I can see a bigger picture of what's happening. All right, looks like we drove Porter off, so that's nice. Wasn't expecting that to happen quite so easily. So let's send the 33rd Virginia over here, since Bartow's coming down. Here comes Franklin with Porter right behind him. I'm going to get Bartow up here just in time. No, 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 no. His scouts are going to try to come back and take those supplies. Let's not let that happen. All right, so B drove off the New York Regiment. We're going to send him back over to guard the bridge one more time. Got some some... Some holes in the line, which I expected. I've got a lot of ground to cover and not quite enough men to do it. But really, I just got to hang on. In 25 minutes, this battle is going to turn dramatically. Grab the supplies back. Yeah, nope, I got them. They're right here. Okay. Let's run them down the line just to make sure everybody's good. Actually, everybody's everybody's supplied. I guess we're okay. Oh, because I got these supplies here. Awesome. See, I didn't even bring any of my own because I knew that would probably be the case. So his cavalry is going to continue to harass me up here because I don't have any units covering there after moving Bartow off the line. So this is interesting. I, I'm not even seeing his brigades here anymore. So I don't know if they're bringing them around this way to try and hit this weakness in my lines or if they're going to go up this way. But 16 minutes is not going to matter because I'm about to get a bunch of reinforcements.
All right, here they come. Here comes Keys again. Three minutes, and then we get the reinforcements, and it's time for a counterattack. All right, so now we go on to the last phase. This is where the battle turns heavily in my favor because here comes my second army uh, that arrived and is going to help me turn the tide of this battle. Okay, let's do phase three. Let's pause real quick. Let's uh, coordinate our forces. Obviously, we definitely want to just go ahead and send Smith right up into his flank over here. I think I'll send Cock that way as well, just because that's where the majority of the remainder of his forces are. And then we'll send Bonham, Holmes, and Yule over this side, and we'll turn the flank of those guys. And I think I'll send General Johnston with them. Going to be a little bit of a surprise for him when another 2,300 men show up on his flank. Thirty third Virginia's going to have a little bit of a rough time with these guys, it looks like. So let's go ahead and send Bonham up here to deal with them first. Forget the skirmishers. Fire on Howard. All right, let's pause real quick. See where things stand. All right, we dealt with those guys. Let's get across the river now. 33rd Virginia, you've done done your duty for the day. Jeez, you lost 67% casualties. Let those guys get across there. All right, looks like Wilcox is coming at me from the north. That's a bit of an issue. I got to pull these these guns. Nah, we'll leave the guns. Those guns aren't mine anyway. Let them get a few last shots off. this he's, he's making a run for my supplies yeah bad idea dude now he got himself trapped Pause again, see where things stand. Looks like we're about to overrun a battery here. No, no, no. Okay, now we can start advancing these brigades. 
turn his flank. But don't run. some of these smaller units together here okay now let's get this flank attack going Once these guys are into place, we'll go ahead and advance that line and roll these guys up. I think a couple of my units just went ahead and merged. There we go. All right, General Johnston, let's roll these guys up. There, Wade Hampton was killed again. I'm two for two on that. When I played this last night, he was killed. All right, just an hour and a half to go. This is well in hand. Look at all the blue in front of that bridge. It's reminiscent of Burnside Bridge at Antietam. This is really the only weak spot in my line. Let's go ahead and bring Jackson up there. I'll put him there and Put Hampton down facing. I can't turn my flank to this huge battery up there on the hill. All right, we can go ahead and speed things along, I think. Theophilus Holmes is killed. My goodness, look at Smith. He just came in and just tore up. 
get him some supply. Wow, we just disintegrated an arm a, a brigade that still had 700 men. Now it's turning into the route that first bull run was. Now we're going to do the same to Sherman. That's pretty well it. I don't think I'll push this too much more. The only reason I would is if I think it'll gain me some more weapons, but it doesn't necessarily seem to be the case. It's really all over but the final score, as they say. Now, that was easy uh, compared to what I'm expecting to see at Shiloh. I think Shiloh is going to be a mess, and I'm not entirely sure I can think in my mind of any way to win that battle as the Confederacy. Uh, I think it's going to be tough. I think it's going to be real tough. I'll, I'll have to look at that and just see what the numbers look like, but I'm just not entirely sure that's a winnable battle for me. All right, so here's the final. So pretty even numbers. Now this is not quite what it was when I played it last night, uh, but it's pretty comparable. It's still three to one. I think it was about fifteen thousand and five thousand, uh, but basically the same. Still about three to one casualties, which I will take any day of the week, especially later in the war. Um, grab some supplies, so that's helpful. But really didn't capture a whole lot else that's going to benefit me in any great way. We lost Theophilus Holmes, who I don't think was one of mine anyway. All right, so let's see where things stand before we go into to the battles that are going to lead up to the Battle of Shiloh. Okay. Now here's where we got to decide what to do with Army Organization. I definitely need to add... I'll need one more before I can get 2,000 in Brigade side, size, but that's definitely where I want to go next. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. He got 11,000 fresh troops, so he basically it's a wash. He's still at 52 to 57,000. Just looking at what Shiloh would be right now before these other two battles, he's already at 65,000. Yikes. And that doesn't even count whatever scaling is going to happen when I start adding my troops. All right, so more immediate. I'm looking at the upcoming battles, which I guess Ambush Convoy is first. That's one where I'd probably really want to have some cavalry, but uh, I'm just not sure I can go there yet. How many can I take into this fight? So 10 brigades, and I'm certainly not going to have nearly that many. But this is where I just basically want to just create some new ones rather than pouring reinforcements into existing ones. What I've decided is that in terms of how I'm going to build my army, when I did my last campaign, I tended to try and keep as many, at least two star units as possible. I don't think that's going to be feasible in this mode, in legendary mode. So what I'm going to do is I'll try to keep at least one elite unit in each division where possible, and then kind of populate the rest with more green troops. Uh, I can spend some reputation if I so choose. Uh, we'll have to decide if that's what I want to do there. But mainly, I'm just going to probably just create some new units here. Let's see what kind of cavalry. I've really got nothing. I'm going to have to buy whatever I get. I've got 136 here, so maybe I can at least... Um, Create a unit with 250. Eh, we'll go up to 500. Pretty well equip equipped cavalrymen. If I go with at least a colonel, then I get a, a star. 
Okay. So there's that. Let's, um, all the other thing, um, I am going to try to put a lot of my more experienced troops into the artillery, uh, just because I won't have to replace quite as many of them. Uh, so I feel like if I can get a bunch of two and three star artillery units early on, that'll probably help me some. We've got a bunch of Springfields available, so that that's a little bit helpful at least. At least that keeps the cost down somewhat. Yes, sir. I'll save the Brigadier General for when I create another division. Well, I guess I can. Okay. Yes, sir. I thought I created another division. Yeah, there we go. Sir, yes, sir. All right, so what's that give me? Four, five, six, seven. Let's go with another uh, unit of artillery. Let's go and get some Napoleons going. We've only got nine of them. Deering's Napoleons, just so it's easier for me to tell where they are for now. And uh, some people were asking about naming units. Yes, I absolutely will start renaming units. Uh, personal policy that I have, just to make it more interesting, is I do not name, uh, give units special names until they get to two stars. And, of course, I will start with the names given to me by my patrons. That's one of the rewards at the $10 a month level is you get to name a brigade. So I think I've got six of those now. So the first six are going to be uh, those folks. But uh, other names will come of historical units down the road. So uh, we got two more brigades to go here. I may go another cavalry because I've got plenty of money to do that with right now. I'm going to go 500 again for now. This time I'll use the 1842s. And we're going to get a colonel there. Sir, yes, sir. And I'll actually go ahead and drag the other cavalry down there so we just kind of have a cavalry division. And then one more infantry brigade to round things out. Oh, we got quite a few palmettos here. All right. So we've actually got some money left as well as men, men. So, hey, let's go ahead and... Well, that... Who's closest to another star? I guess nobody is, really. These guys have more men, so it'll be a little more cost-effective to go there. Sir, yes, sir! All right. I'm not. I'm definitely not going to need supplies here. Um, all right, so that's what our army will look like going into this next battle. Uh, it looks like I've got what, ten thousand men, twenty-one guns, as well as some artillery. I'm just curious to see if Shiloh went up at all from me building a bigger army. Now it's still about sixty-five, so he's probably about maxed out. But one hundred and ninety-six guns. All right, so I think that's more than enough. Uh, that gives you plenty to look at for what I'm going to be doing next. We'll be going into the ambush convoy next. As always, I welcome your comments, your questions, your observations, your input, what you think I should have done, what you think I did well, anything at all. It's always great to have uh, you know, a couple hundred other pairs of eyes looking at a battle to see things that maybe I missed or maybe that I could have done differently or better. Uh, I've gotten much better at the game because of all of you and your input, and hopefully maybe along the way I've taught you a thing or two as well. That's really why I think YouTube is awesome, because we all learn from each other, and it's a collaborative effort. So thank you for that. If you would hit the thumbs up, I would appreciate it. Check out some of my other videos if you're new to the channel, and we will see you again soon. Thanks for watching.